Hi, I'm Ollie. I'm a new farmer and a greengrocer, and I've started a farm this year to learn how to be a part of my local food system. It might be obvious or not, but my biggest weakness, especially in doing something like this, is resting. There's so many things to do that I just don't know when to stop working. And I think sometimes it beats me down and sometimes I don't do it to my own benefit. I struggle to stop and to slow down. And I enjoy the challenge really of seeing all the things that need doing and having a bit of self-control and just thinking, okay, it's gonna be okay. It'll be there in a few days when I come back to it. Because I often like to think that everything needs doing right now. But it's been another one of those weeks, a tiring one, but everything is going okay. The grass is growing back, the weeds are growing back quite strongly. But as I plant into beds, I'm weeding them beforehand and kind of getting on top of them, making that a priority, just keeping on top of the weeds. Because I, I've seen farms where the weeds get out of control and it's not fun. Hey Harrison. Hey Griggsy. Welcome to the Loma. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> you feeling hungover? You feeling pretty fresh? I'm pretty dusty today. Yeah. <laughs> pretty hungover, yeah. I've got some heavy work for you. Mm, looking forward to that. It just needs doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is it? I wanted to show you quickly um, an experiment that I'm doing, of how I'm preparing this land a bit differently. The rest of the field, I've got worked by a tractor, but this whole field started out as grass. Same grass that you can see where the chickens are now. But this is something different. This is where we're going to plant our squash beds to see if we could just put this plastic on, kill the grass, lift it up after it's been on for three months, put some compost down, scarify it by hand, which just means to disturb the top layer, kind of break up the decomposing grass and plant straight into that. Expected? Mm, no. There's way more, there's way more steps than you probably think. Yeah. Also with that, that thing's difficult. The whole yeah. um, that was quite fun. I quite enjoyed it. Well, you have to do all the work, and then it's you get to see the fun few, bit at the yeah, end. It's quite fair for you to see them in the ground afterwards. first order of business is using a hoe like this one to scrape away the top layer of grass and just detach anything still growing or still attached to the earth. The second step then is to use a fork just to lift up and loosen the earth. And then the last stage is going back with a hoe, breaking it all up a bit, making a bit of a finer tilt so that I could put the compost on top and plant the squash straight into it. breaking up this field the key thing that I'm trying to do is loosen the soil because of cooch grass which is a weed and in firm grass you get clumps of roots like this and they'll grow straight back when you leave it out it's starting to grow in some places already so part of loosening it means that later on when I come to weed it I'll be able to actually take out these long strands of runners that it sends out rather than it being such firm soil that you just snap up every time nuisance what I'm trying to do. That is a 
officially just over half of all the squashes that we have to do this year. Got into a bit of a routine, feeling optimistic. I'm being a bit broken by it, but I can keep them going a little bit every morning and I think I'll get there. I staggered the second planting of squash by accident and it's just as well that I did because they'd all be ready now and I would not be ready to get them in the ground. So I've got another couple of weeks to keep working at the other half of the beds. I can really appreciate the power of tractors now. Tractors I know can be very destructive in how much they move the earth, how they can destroy soil structure. And I can understand why, they're so powerful. Whereas me just out here on my own or with a few people, there's only so much damage we can do. I'm conducting a fun little experiment in this bed right here, and it's with carrots. There's one thing that really excites me, and it's good carrots. It's something I really, really, really want to get right, because when you pick a carrot out of the ground of certain varieties that aren't generally shop-bought varieties, they taste so much sweeter, they taste so much better. Under where the ground was rotivated is still very firm, so I'm going to do two little trials. So four rows, because I've got four varieties of carrots, Half of it I'm going to have loosened with a fork and then smoothed on the surface and half of it I'm going to plant straight into. The things that I'm expecting to be wary of are the carrot root fly, which much like the cabbage root fly, eats at the roots of the carrots. So it doesn't kill them, but it makes these black burrows all the way through the carrots and makes your crop unsaleable. I'll probably have to wait about three weeks until the seeds germinate and another couple of months until I get anything worth picking. But that's okay, that's life. steps involved in planting the carrots is after the seed bed is prepared and smooth use the row marker to prepare where the rows are going to go and then just using this different type of hoe I'm making drills which is basically a little trench and I'll directly seed the carrots straight into there then I'll water directly into the drill so the moisture stays at the bottom of the trench and then I'll put the seeds on top cover it over again walk on it to compact it a little bit and then wait till the magic starts to happen. fun and new today. All these cabbages, Chinese cabbage that we've grown, they've grown really well. They've headed out really nicely, but now they've started to go to flower, which means that from the middle, the center, they send out this big flower shoot and the plants effectively change from a, a leaf producing plant to a, a flower stem producing plant and eventually seeds. So these all need to be cut immediately. Otherwise they'll be inedible. And I've actually managed to sell 25 of them to local people who have businesses cooking and scoop shop who will probably ferment them and try and make something out of them. So that's great and I'm really grateful to them. It's my first big harvest.
Thanks for watching. See you next week.